Today we're going to replace the battery on a 2019 Mini Cooper F series that refused to start. We register the battery at the end, show which baffles and trim pieces to remove to get to it, show it in a simple, easily digestible manner, and cover an easy pitfall involving getting a battery with the same rating but a different physical size. And open the hood by pulling twice on it. Unfortunately, the battery comes out this way. So in addition to removing all of these plastic clips here, we're going to have to remove this entire air box out of the way. Luckily, it doesn't take too long. Now there are two plastic 10 millimeter nuts here. There are these three plastic twisties, trying to cut clockwise, and there are little arrows drawn on them. Should be in the open position. There's one more here. Better larger to twist them with. The slits facing the arrows on the plastic, you pull up and remove the piece. Now we remove the front two 10 millimeters on this plastic front thing. That this lifts out of position. Next, we're going to remove the air box. It's a 10 millimeter bolt here. And a seven millimeter fastener here. Now for this clamp to loosen to let the air box come out of the hose. We disconnect the nav sensor by pulling back on this plastic clip at the bottom. Lo and behold, pull it back this way and pull it out and unseat the cable. There we go. With that done, should simply so we can attach this. Again, there can be a little bit of resistance on these bottom rubber thingies holding it in. There normally should be a thingy here as well, which is absent. But we remove one, two, three round bolts. They are eight millimeter, three screws. Because we removed those eight millimeters, as well as the plastic panel on the back, all we have to do is pull up on this rubber trim, set it aside, and pull and remove this plastic cover. This one is broken, it looks like it's broken here. Kind of hard to see, but there's a black plastic clip holding this plastic trim in place. Got it a bit with this plastic pry tool. And it comes right out. And remove this plastic piece. Remove the plastic brace by removing the two 13 millimeter bolts. Remove the brace holding the battery at the bottom. When disconnecting, always disconnect negative first. This is positive, this is negative. So disconnect the vent tube from here. Leave it on the side where you won't forget to reconnect it. And these are 10 millimeters. And always loosen negative. Remove negative first. Opa. Then remove the positive one. And the battery should be slidable outwards, like so. And that's as straightforward as it gets. Kind of heavy, be aware. We have a replacement AGM technology. Also on replacement batteries, you have holes on the right and left so toxic gases can escape because our vent tube is on the front with the positive. We have asked the battery store for a vent blocker thingy and we have put this vent blocker inside of this vent on this side. Like from so from here. Now to make absolute sure. Negative was back there, yes. But the issue is that it was too small. So make sure you check the exact proportions 
even if you go to the battery shop and they give you one that matches the charge to get one that matches the dimensions as well there's no way of locking down batteries that are smaller than they should be Better. Now we always connect positive first. Cool. It might spark, that's okay. And make sure the vent blocker is installed on that side. The other battery, the other vent side covered, and reinstall the vent tube. And we reinstall this plastic bracket that holds the battery in place. And this wire goes into this opening. There we go, like so. So both of these 13 millimeter bolts gave me difficulty. You can see how nice and clean the threads are now. That's because I re-threaded them. These threads did not give me that much difficulty, but these are giving me a lot of difficulty and are stripping the th and the threads are stripping here. So if you need to, you have to once again, take the battery out. You can fit a tool by manually holding this black piece because it falls off and then re-threading this like so. I'm assuming this is problematic because all the junk falls in here and clogs up the thread. So if this happens to you, you have to hold this black piece, otherwise it falls out. Half of it, because otherwise the half doesn't fit because of all the wiring. And you re-thread this opening. And now with what's left of the threads, this darn bolt actually goes in now. And then lower it. And it goes into the groove here. This trim piece goes back in place. There should be a little plastic cap here. Mine's missing. We reinsert this piece on top of the battery, but hopefully yours is not broken. More damage and risk than it's worth it. Push your cowl up over this a little bit. Make sure it's nice and seated. Getting these to twist into position is kind of a bear, but eventually you get it, you have to pull up on this lip here without ripping it obviously, and then you eventually get it to successfully turn. Turn one, two, three, from the horizontal to vertical, this one to the horizontal. Let me sit in the front gasket here. And there should be a little plastic thingy that has broken out on mine here. There's a plastic tattoo, plastic 10 millimeter nuts here. Now we reinstall the air box, first making sure to insert it into this hose and reconnecting the sensor for the MAF sensor. It reinserts quite easily. I think we want to first angle the box down when we reinsert because there's a little lip at the bottom that needs to go under and there are two prongs that go inside of the little openings here so without a seat into position yeah. cable goes back on the metal bracket. And with that, we simply clip in this one of these last things, this air baffle. And it just naturally clipped into place. And we install the two 10 millimeter nuts onto these bolts. So 
So what I have now, what we have to do now is reset the battery or register the new battery. And the reason it does this is because with auto start and stop, it to prevent wear over time, it decreases how much it lets the battery charge up to purportedly to make them last longer with start stop. So you have to tell the car that you put a new battery in. So it lets the new battery, the old battery got to, I don't know, eight tenths, for example, you have to tell it it has a new battery so that it charges the new battery all the way up to 10 tenths. So on your smartphone, you go to the app store, go to purchase and type Bimmer. Bimmer code, and you're gonna Bimmer link, and that's going to be $40. Unfortunately, we need to purchase that. Let it download real quick, launch it, and then you connect. So then we buy one of these bad boys. It has to be a supported OBD2 scan tool with Bluetooth 4.0. Now underneath, plug in the YouTube reader with the OBD2 plugged in. Put the key in the car, start the ignition. And now on our smartphone, we go to viewer link, connect, vpeak, connect. I'll say connecting. battery register new battery same capacity and type register excellent I was literally holding my phone with the screen recording that you just saw here but the car visually did nothing during the battery registration and there was no message on the dashboard anywhere only in the app Thanks for watching and enjoy.